Hello critters, welcome to today's 3D print. No live stream today. I'll explain why in just a second. So I finally got a confirmed sale on one of those plastic sheds. I need a small shed up front, some place where I could put the bike, some place where I could put the lawnmower, my little bit of lawn equipment, hose, etc. I need some place that's not sitting out in the open and where I don't have to go all the way to the back and open up a shipping container and get them out from there. Um, they're very hard to get. <laughs> um, very, very, very hard to get. I mean, I'm talking, I've replied to them an hour and a half after they pop up on Facebook Marketplace and gone. <laughs> or they say, okay, no problem, I'll meet you tomorrow. And then six hours later, they say, okay, it's gone, sorry. <laughs> they just... People around here don't hold stuff, and I guess because a lot of people blow them off, and so they do a no-holds kind of thing. Well, this person said, if I come before noon tomorrow, they'll hold it. So, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> it's a Keter all-resin 8x5 shit. 400 bucks. That's like 1500 bucks new. <laughs> that's really, really nice. Not only is it all resin, so it won't rust or corrode, but it's going to be under my carport, so it'll be protected. The carport's not installed yet. So um, I'm going to get that tomorrow. I'm also, I scored doors. Um, if you guys remember my early video when I first moved here, um, most of my videos about living here aren't on today's 3D print. They're on lifeofnerese.com. But I figure every now and then I'll give you guys an update. And since I can't do a live stream, you guys are getting a little update. And a little teaser with some drone video from today as we put the asphalt millings down. And then um, um, the full videos will be on lifeofnerese.com later in the week once I finish editing the videos. So um, I'm going to pick up the shed tomorrow morning. And I'm also picking up doors. If you guys remember when I first moved in here, most of the doors in this house don't work. Um, the front door was gone. It wasn't there. <laughs> so I brought a door with me from Pennsylvania and promptly broke it and had to re repair it. But <laughs> um, anyway, um, only one door in the house, two doors, my bathroom door um, and my bedroom door does no, my bedroom doesn't have one. Um, I think one closet and one bathroom door has a handle. So there's no handles on any of the doors or they're broken or missing parts or they don't fit right. And um, several of the doors are actually damaged, like someone kicked it in. And so, you know, yeah, the door has that hole in the frame where the, the mechanism goes in and the piece comes out the side. You know, it's, it's tore up here because somebody kicked the door open, ripped it apart to get it open. So I found, finally, finally found two 28-inch doors. Um, my sister's door is actually intact. It just needs hardware. Um... Um, but the third bedroom and my, I'm sorry, the third bedroom door is intact, just needs hardware. Our bedroom doors are destroyed. So I got two 20 inch doors coming to replace that. I also scored a great deal on some, you know, uh, what do you call it? Rubbed oil bronze door handle hardware. I just thought that was a nice color. It looked good against the white. Um, a hundred bucks, $105. I got six passageway doors and three privacy door hardware kits. So they'll all match, except for the front and back door. Those are brass. And um, um, actually, I'll have enough hardware. I might even replace the front and back door to match, just so the whole house will match, which I think would be pretty cool. Because my front and back doors don't have to have um, locking handles because I use electronic lock. So they just use passage doors. This way you don't have to worry about, you know, locking the one. and So you, you have to unlock both to get in the house. I've had that happen a few times. <laughs> so, um... A little short update i'm going to give you that update as you watch the drone video or the pictures so stay tuned here it comes Alrighty. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you some pictures and we're going to talk while i show you the pictures <laughs> um these are from the mavic mini and this is the work i had done today at the house and i'm also going to give you some updates on what i'm getting done at the house um, the reason can't do the stream is because she wants the shed picked up by noon, so I can't pass that up. I've been trying for two months to get one of these kind of things. They actually show up pretty regularly, you know, one or two a week. They just disappear so freaking fast. <laughs> so she said she'll hold it. I'm not going to rock that boat. I'm going to go get it. Um, I could probably show you what it looks like. 
I want you to do that. Thank you. On Facebook. Ooh, I gotta be careful doing this because I don't want to show. So there it is. So it's this thing here. Really, really nice, very desirable. <laughs> All plastic. So I have to go get it. I can't risk that. I'm also getting doors. So I could finally fix all the doors in this house. So anyway, to the pictures. If you want to see the drone video, that'll be on Life of Nerys later this week. So the uh, same guys I had come out the first time, I had them come out again. 1800 bucks, two loads of millings. You can see in the back here, that's a load there. And over here where you can't see it, there's another load that they've been spreading. Um, I also got conduit, and they used the loader to dig a trench for the conduit. So my Comcast internet line, which Comcast was supposed to bury and never did, is now running through this one inch conduit, 16 feet. So it goes underneath my new road, which is actually, I guess it is a road. <laughs> I'm gonna call it Villain Drive. <laughs> and um, hopefully I'm gonna paint the top of the container to say, um, this is not a secret layer before Google Maps goes over again. <laughs> So, um, they're using a loader to dig the trench so that we can bury that pipe underground and have the two ends stick out on each end. And, um, I can get away with that here because of how dry it is. I might still put some sort of a cap on the ends to, um, discourage water from going inside the hole. I'm also probably going to stuff some steel wool in there to discourage insects and stuff from going inside of there and trying to live in there. Um... But now, if they have to run new wire, we don't have to dig up my road. <laughs> we just run the wire along the fence like we are now and run it through the conduit. So that takes care of that. So there we go. You can see we're digging up the trench with the loader. And we're going to run this conduit. The conduit is going to run to about here. I also had this entire area here covered, which kind of limited how much I can cover over here. But that's okay, because now I have a place where I can park my little trailers. And it's out of view from the road. So it's a little more secure. I might even be able to chain them down somehow. We'll see. Just to make sure because they're they're pretty valuable. They're desirable. Trailer size. Um, I would love to have one of these loaders, but that even if I could somehow afford it, I've seen one for as low as four thousand dollars. That's just dumb. <laughs> That's dumb for me to buy something like that. And I don't have the money. But it would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I could do a lot with that. But um, I also got uh, Michelle's basketball hoop moved into place finally. Because uh, she stuffed it in this hole right here. So it won't get blown down. I'm actually going to tie it to the trees. And um, this way she can do her little dribbling. I'm hoping that will encourage her to exercise more. And um, especially as she loses weight. So here we are getting ready to set it in. They ended up digging this trench out a little further. So I want to make sure the... Um, when we did the road, it wasn't going to pinch it. So they now the one mistake is I wanted this area here all done, not this area entrance here. But we had a miscommunication. They started here, and once you lay it down, you really can't pick it up and move it. So I was like, okay, we'll just deal with it. It ended up working out pretty good. It looks nice. Um, I, I I'm happy with it. Eventually, I need to get two more loads of millings. Can't afford that right now. That's a low priority thing now. Now that I have the important stuff essentially paved, um, the other stuff I want done is low priority. So I'm not going to dick with that until I have the money. Um, they basically, they pick up a load, they drop it, and then they use the loader as a scraper. And they scrape it out. And he puts it down flat like that and goes forward again. And then they use the rakes to even out spots. And then they go over it with a roller. So it really packs it down. The difference is amazing. It actually feels like asphalt, as long as you don't try to poke it with something. If you try to poke it with something, like with a stick or something sharp or like a table leg, it'll it'll it'll, it'll scrape away the material. But just walking and driving on it, it feels like an asphalt road. And they said over time, this stuff was nice and gooey. It looked like it had a lot of oil, tar left in it. They said that over time, it'll actually pack down harder, especially when you get a few hot summer days and it heats up. They said it'll get harder and harder over time. It won't wash away and it won't push away like gravel does. Gravel would cost about the same, except gravel is harder to walk on, harder to drive on, noisy as hell, not smooth, and you have to keep replenishing gravel. Gravel gets pushed in, gravel gets pushed out, 
this does not. So in the long run, it's significantly cheaper, both in initial purchase price and in long run for maintenance and um, more convenient. But see, I wanted all this filled in. So eventually I'll get that all filled in. Here's the second pile. And here's me flying the drone. <laughs> I actually landed the drone on top of his loader. I missed the first time. I got in position. I told it to land. It came down, and then he moved. I was like, no! <laughs> it was hovering right behind his loader. It was like six inches. If he'd moved six inches, smack. <laughs> good drone. Good drone. <laughs> um, so <coughs> this is the entrance to Villain Drive. This is my third entrance that takes you straight to the backyard. I'll, I'll show you that more later. You can see them spreading it out with their spreaders. Nice guys. They work hard. They do a good job. They're retired. He's a firefighter. He works 2-4. So on his four off, he does this on the side. He has all of his own equipment. You know, he's these guys are all, you know, um, general contractors. You know, they've done this for a while. They've been working together for about three or four years now. You can see how soft it is when they first put it down, but then when they pack it, it's amazing the change. It's it's really pretty impressive. I love these straight down views. This is where I landed on top of his loader. I don't think I have video of that. I think it turns off the camera when you actually land. I don't think it keeps the camera going. I was hoping it would so I could land, move the camera around a little bit, and then take off again, but I think it turns it off when you land. Um, so now we're connecting with that second pile. Now they're going to start doing this. So they use the loader to do dirt work first to level all the ground. And by leveling all the ground, you reduce how much of the stuff you need. Because otherwise you'll have thin spots where the ground is high and you'll be wasting material, making it thick where it doesn't need to be thick. Eventually I want to get all of this done, all of this ground you see here. I want it all paved. So I can drive through here, park here, you know, not an issue, it would be fine. Like, I want to have a little parking pad right here for guests to park at. This is where I park the minivan right now. Because this area here gets shade for half the day. Because this tree gives you a little bit of shade. So, keeps the sun from cooking your car. So, here he is just doing the grading. And he started putting the millings down. This stuff here is the millings I had to put down the first time. You see the color difference. Eventually, it'll all be the same color, of course. I got a... A storm door that will fit where my utility room is so that we can close the storm door behind us before opening the back door to take the garbage out so the cats don't <laughs> out the back door. I also got some of these church tables. They have like the modesty panels on the front, but they're really, really sturdy, heavy duty, and they're long and skinny. So I think we're going to take the leather chair out of my sister's room and I'm going to put it in the third bedroom. I've reduced the third bedroom from three beds to two beds. So that I still have a guest room, but I'm also going to let her use that room when we don't have guests. Because it's going to be pretty rare. Um, that will give her more space. Because then I could put one of these tables in her bedroom and I could put her pink computer chair that we got her in her bedroom. So that will be nice. Um, you can see there, that's the tile that's going to go in the kitchen. Here's her basketball hoop set up. So I moved the trailer and um, cap to the back here so that we could get this all done in asphalt so one two three my little trailers will all be parked right there in a the line and i think i'm going to make this trailer here my permanent trash trailer so i'm going to make a box on that trailer that's exactly one cubic yard since that's how much i'm allowed to take for five bucks so that will be my permanent trash trailer i'll park that right here um, in this little padded area right here next to the front door depending on whether i do a porch or not this way all i have to do is open the door toss the trash out into the trailer when it's full hitch it up tow it off to the um transfer station of course i'm dropping everything now <laughs> um this is the fence line my neighbor's yard so here's another view oh i also got a door for the shed i'm getting put up uh -huh. not the plastic shed but the big shed that's going in the back i'll show you guys that in a minute well it's not there yet but where it's going to go um because basically i got the eidl loan the economic infrastructure disaster loan so by getting that loan I am able to do these things with very generous payment plan hopefully I can pay it off in a couple of years but even if I can't it's only 60 bucks a month that's how I'm able to afford this I'm taking a risk taking on a little bit of debt at very very generous terms in order to allow me to make some uh, infrastructure improvements to the house 
So basically, the loan paid for the trailers, and I'm using my own cash to pay for the upgrades to keep it all legit. Um, so here's the little extension to connect these two halves. So if I want to drive from my main driveway over to here, there's a path to do that. Here are the new connects to the old. I thought we were going to do this, so I moved the minivan, so I just put it back at the end of the day. So here is my patio in the back. This is now expanded, and this here is also expanded. So now I can park the bus on top of asphalt. So the bus will no longer be parked on top of dirt, because dirt is bad for tires. Even dry out here, you shouldn't be parking on dirt if you can help it. So that will be better for my vehicles, since now they won't have to park on dirt anymore. Um, I got new metal tables. All three of these tables are all metal, which is fantastic. I got some burner griddles here. I got some... Um, shelving unit thingies to put outside the bathroom door so the shell has a little more space for putting things like shampoos and all that stuff um and i also got the louvers for my whole house fan i do not have the air conditioner on right now it is 64 degrees out so the moment the sun goes down the air conditioner gets turned off and turn on the whole house fan because the humidity is 15 percent that works fantastically that's one of the things i love about out here i also found out that racks where i got the um, stuff they the conduit they sell this siding sheets it's like a it's like a press board the siding on the side of my house so i can get matching siding the matching sheets it's like i don't know what you call it it's like a press board type of thing it's not really wood um but anyway i can get a matching piece of that so i can build a proper door around my water heater so it's not this freaking piece of warped plywood make it actually look halfway decent and um, let's go to the next picture. Here we go. So the plan, oh, he also dumped, I gave him a little extra because he was very cool. He dumped a bunch of dirt here. So this is now all packed down dirt, the same level as the patio because I'm getting a shed installed right here. A 10 by 16 foot shed. It's gonna fit right in this space right here. Now the purpose of this shed is to add a room onto the house without breaking the rules <laughs> i'm allowed to put up a 200 square foot structure without a permit i can't run electric to it because that would require a permit um but power is right there on the other side of the wall so i'm going to punch a hole through the wall punch a hole through the um shed wall 3d print a grommet to seal that opening on both sides and um then just run the cable inside because it's only going to be a couple of freezers and um the washer and dryer so I will be able to move the washer dryer and all my freezers and a workbench with some printers on it out into this shed space, which I'm going to insulate and sheetrock so that it doesn't get ultra cold in winter. And that will not be attached to the house. Instead, there will be a door here, which is going to be this door right here. That door up in the corner there. If you follow my mouse, if you see my mouse right there, that's a really nice solid pine door. That's going to be my new exterior door to go out the back. And this door here will open into a cutout hole in the shed. And we'll just leave that door open. So we can walk, they're going to put the shed up on blocks. And then I'm going to create a soft seal airlock between the house and the shed. This way I'm not actually bolting anything to the house. You can pull the shed right away from the house if you wanted to. This way if I do decide to sell this house, that won't be a problem. If you've been watching my other channel, you know I got the swamp cooler taken down. Found a guy who did it for 200 bucks. He said another 120 and he can replace all the discolored tile. I said yes. So for 320 bucks, I got the swamp cooler removed, the hole in the roof properly patched, underlayment put down, which was not there before and all new tile put down so you can see there's no more of that nasty milky white color that was there from the calcium and lime coming out of the water so that's all gone and hopefully my one and only roof leak is now also gone fingers crossed you know <laughs> um so there will be a 10 by 16 foot shed right here and then a door here with these stairs coming out of the shed to the patio and um this door we will just leave open and if we ever have to remove the shed, take it with us, or if I sell the house and they don't want the shed, you simply pull the shed away from the house and close the door. And now it's back to the way it was without any modifications. So I'm not ruining the value of the house. I'm not modifying the structure. I'm not attaching anything to the house. I'm not bolting anything to the structure. 
that's cool so i will have my pantry which will allow me to take the four freezers i have the extra fridge the water buffalo the washer dryer I'll put all that out in the shed now 160 square feet added to the house which will give me a lot more room in here i can use those that for 3d printing stuff and um and i could put all my food in what is now the utility so the water buffalo and a couple of food shelves will go in there this way if it gets cold enough that we can't heat the shed it's okay we can close the door and the food won't freeze the, the at least the food that's not supposed to freeze um it's just gonna dramatically dramatically expand the amount of space i have in this house which is going to be simply huge um let's see i got um covers i got the barrel cut in half for my furnace so whenever it rains i burn paper i only do it when it rains i don't want to take a chance of starting a fire and but that keeps all the flame inside so no flames come out of it uh let's see what else we got here here's a oh here's an overview of the whole thing this is cool so eventually all this is going to have millings on it and this also is going to have millings which you'll see soon so when i move this bus up to here to box in this space um, the bus will be on asphalt instead of on dirt. Um, uh, oh, I also have a I have a underbody car brush. It's like it's like a cleaner brush for my car. Whatever this plant is here, it's tall enough that it's higher than my bumper. So whenever I drive the car over it, it's just like sh -sh -sh -sh, cleans the bottom of the car. <laughs> I call it my car's belly rub. But um, <coughs> you can see he connected here to the concrete. This is the rough concrete, clean concrete. I am getting a carport, a 20 by 25 carport to cover this section here. And I'm also getting another 20 by 25 foot here to cover the bulk of the patio. And I'm also getting a cheaper 18 by 21 carport for here. So now I will have covered shaded space front and back and all of my vehicles except for the bus will be under shade so they won't get blasted by the sun so much eventually i think the best bet for permanent for the bus is to have this space right here can you see it yes you can so to have this space right here covered in asphalt so um basically make a loop around the back here cover put asphalt down here park the bus here and make a lean to configuration to give the bus shade and once noon passes the um containers themselves will help shade the bus um, the only problem with that is I don't have easy access or visibility of the door because I have to park the bus back end first. So I'll have access to the back door, but not the front door because the front door will be up here. Um, ultimately what I'd like to do, and I cannot afford this now, is I'd like to get a fourth container. I would like to take this container here and shift it 10 foot this way and put a fourth container about 16 feet away right here and then cover that gap in between them with a roof and um, even a soft roof would be enough most likely but that would keep all sunlight off the wheels and the roof would keep the sunlight off the top and the bus would have a um, relatively safe place for it to park and not be exposed to the elements quite so much it'd be almost as good as being in a garage considering how dry it is here it would be about as good as being it would actually be better than being in a garage in pennsylvania so, um, but that's, that's a couple years down the road because it's another $3,000 for that. Um, the roof itself wouldn't be that hard because when I cut these inside of these containers open, I'm going to be cutting 20 foot sections out. This way I'm leaving 50% of the container wall intact for structural integrity. Well, I'm going to have four of them, you know, one for this one and this one, one for this one and this one. That's four, eight foot tall or seven foot tall, eight foot tall. Um, 20 foot long pieces of corrugated metal well I can weld them across the opening here well 8 times 4 is 32 feet that's 32 feet of covered space I only need one more piece of metal to make it 40 feet and then I'd have the roof for the bus so eventually these containers might actually give me the material I need to cover the gap over a fourth container because ideally I would want to take all my storage stuff in these two containers here and move them to the fourth container so that there is no storage in these three containers so I can have this open as 990 square feet of workshop space. That would be nice. That would be really, really nice. 
Um, so this property is going to change dramatically over the coming weeks. <laughs> um, so here we are. Oh, this is a cool shot. I love this. This is this is overcast. This is cloud passing in front of the sun. The lighting difference is so dramatic. This is just. I'm going to print this picture. This this is just. I'm I'm, I'm hoping I can repeat this again when it's all done with this kind of lighting because it's just. It's got a, a surreal look to it. I, I love this picture. So um, um, they're still doing dirt work here. They haven't taken the roller off yet. Um, as you probably are aware, if you watch my video, um, I did. We did manage to get the snowblower out of the trailer, so I got to get that running again, get it in storage. That's another reason why I want the shed up here. I have a place to put the snowblower. I have a place to put the lawnmower, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, coming back down, they're doing work. He did all the dirt work over here already. Um, let's see what else do I got here? I got to sell this electric stove. I don't need it anymore. I'm piling this up with all of my cardboard to go to the recycling. So once that's full, I'll haul that off to recycling um, to get that taken care of. I got a utility sink for back here. I'm just going to put a T in the water, going to the water heater or right here, and run a hose down to there with a valve on the bottom. So in the wintertime, I can empty that hose and keep it from freezing. But in the warm months, I'll have an outdoor sink with hot and cold water. That'd be convenient. It'd be nice to have. And, um... Oh, now he's working the, this is later, they've spread all of the millings and now he's working. Right now the millings are soft. So if you step on it, you can actually sink into it. It feels like um, heavy sand. But then we go, when he goes over it with the vibrating roller truck thing, um, it packs it hard as rock. And you, the difference is amazing. It's, it's really an amazing transformation once it's compressed. So now you see here where we spread this, we also filled this in a tiny bit. Um, so we got this all filled in enough that I can now park the bus here and the bus will be out of the dirt. Um, I might also have enough space to get this trailer out of the dirt. I'd like to get that trailer out of the dirt too, since I got four brand new tires on the thing. I also got tire covers for all the vehicles, little fabric covers, these things. So these are the fabric covers that cover all the wheels. If you ever go to a campground, you see they got the covers on their wheels. That's to look good, but also these particular are for UV protection, so the UV light doesn't destroy the tires on the vehicles. This is the um, tamper. They use that for the edges and places where they can't reach with the um, with the rolling truck thing. Here's me flying the drone. There's the, a really nice 115 bucks solid pine exterior, 36 by 80 door. That's a beautiful door for the price. I got this amazing thing. It's actually a cooler. This is insulated. So this is for hunters. They would fill this with ice and put their carcasses in there, you know, so they don't have to process them immediately, you know, while they're on their trip for hunting. Well, um, the strap didn't quite sit over the top of it right, and I realized it has these little hooky points here. So I ran the strap through the hooky point. Fantastic. Held it down nice and tight. My dumb, stupid, lame brain, idiotic ass forgot the fact that there was nothing now holding the lid on. <laughs> Woo! That lid is gone. I drove up and down the highway five or six times. Could not find that lid. Somebody picked it up and took it. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> so there's 60 bucks wasted. <laughs> I'll probably eventually make a new lid for it. You know, make a styrofoam lid, start carving it, fiberglass it. But oh, what a pain in the ass. I had the lid for it and my dumb ass screwed it up. And what are you going to do? So they hose it all down when they compact it. It helps to compact it and also prevents it from sticking. And I think makes it tighter. Here's an overview of everything done. Almost done, I think. Yeah, I think it is done. I think we already did this. Yeah, I think we already did that. So now you can see how much I have paved, basically. I got the patio here. I got a little paved section here, so I don't have to step in dirt when I go to the um, furnace. Um, this is all paved. This path here around this corner is paved. That's all connected now. This area is paved, so my two trailers and that little trailer, those will park right here. So I'll have a dedicated spot to put those trailers, which is really nice. Um, <coughs> the um, I'm probably going to park this trailer over here behind the um, um, the containers, so that um. I have a safe place to put the trailer. It's out of the way, out of sight. 
I'm going to put paver stones below it so the tires are not touching dirt. Um, this way it'll be mostly shaded from the sun. Only the morning sun will be able to hit the tires. Um, and I'm still going to put the covers on it. Because it's not a trailer I'm going to use very much, but it's very handy to have. Um, I might even look into selling it if it's worth anything. I don't know. Um, the old deck from the back of the house. I might use that. Um, there is enough space for me to have this space here be a deck or patio space for the door and still have the carport cover the car. So I might put this, strengthen it, you know, reinforce it, and then put this deck on the front of the house and then put, you know, solid banister railing on it, screens, so that I can kind of sort of make it a room. Now, it's not going to be insulated or anything. It's not going to be secure, but it'll be a dry, not visible from the outside space that I can close up with the idea being I can put packages there. I can store my wood pellets there so I don't have to go down the steps and outside to get wood pellets for the winter. Um, I can, um, we could put our umbrellas there, our muddy, dirty boots when we come in the house. Basically, basically a mud room, a kind of a mud room, which I think might be nice. So I may try to reuse that deck on the front of the house here. I also got the hexagonal um, paver stones. So this entire area now is all paver stones. It's not leveled or anything. Uh, what I should have done, I, I didn't want to move them four times. It really broke my back putting down these paver stones. I mean, it beat the hell out of me. Whew, that was a lot of work. <laughs> um, I should have made a pile and had the guy with the load. He would have done it for me. I should have had him scrape that, make it all level. And then the paver stones would have gone down a lot nicer. I might eventually pull this all out when I get ready to get the next set of millings done in a year or so. Because I want to fill in all this, all of this. I want to fill in around the house like I have here. Um, maybe... Um, put an actual pad here for the bus um, you know when I get that last bit fill in the rest of this um, and then have him do that because doing that manually is just that's just that's a lot of work and um, it's hard to do it right but there is the overview is that the last picture I believe it is nope here's another shot from the other side so when this is all done this will be a 20 by 25 foot carport this will be an 18 by 21 carport and this will be a 20 by 25 carport back here. There will be a 10 by 16 shed right here, which will be basically a room added onto the house. And I'm going to get a 20 by 20 triangular shade sail. And I'm going to hook that onto the edge of the, of the um, carport here and have it come out here. So that this, now keep, this is north, this is south. So that triangular shade will be enough to bring this entire little patio basically under shade, which will be nice. You can see I got a little table here. We can set up a little bref breakfast nook here and sit out front and have breakfast, you know, whatever we want to do, stuff like that, just because it'd be nice. You know, watch the mountain, put a telescope out front, look at the sky. You know, it's, it's going to be cool. I mean, got a lot done. I mean, it's just it, things are happening. It's cool. I also got um, all this tile in the trailer here. That's all the ceramic tile, porcelain tile. Um, it's for the kitchen. So once I get the hardware moved out of the utility room into the shed, then I got a guy who for 500 bucks, which is cheaper than I could do it myself. <laughs> um, he's going to tile the whole kitchen for me. Get rid of this freaking vinyl tile that's pulling up and chipping everywhere and put down proper porcelain tile, which will be really nice. I might also put a tile section around my toilet so it's not carpet in front of my toilet <laughs> i got some nice stains there where um you know, they were there when i got here but my imagination is going wild wondering you know what made those stains and those are not happy thoughts <laughs> um but yeah i think yeah that's it so that is the final um i have a lot more land than i thought um if you see this see that pole right there at the bottom of the picture my property goes to there. So right now, I'm only utilizing half of my land. All of this is available for me to use. This is all mine. So there are things I can do with that in time. I got no money now. 
But the problem is, somewhere here is my septic tank. And I need to know where that is. Um, I'm pretty sure the septic tank is not here because you can see this is bedrock. That's actual rock. That's not just gravel. That's actual stone. So you're you're not digging there at all. <laughs> so I'm assuming that projects a little further. So I'm pretty sure the septic tank is somewhere here in the front yard, which is fine. I have no intention of building there. So that's, that's exactly where I would like it to be. But you know what they say about assumptions. The pipe is right here. And it looks like it goes straight out this way. So I'm hoping that means the septic tank is in this space here. Eventually, I want to um, pave or cut a path along here out to the water jack right here and out to the um, electrical pole here where the breaker is for the whole house, which, by the way, I can upgrade to 100 amps. Um, I'm still waiting for the guy to come out and do it. I bought the breaker. Although now I have to find it. It's been so long that I don't know where I put it. <sighs> but anyway, um, I do have number two copper going to the house, which means I can put a 100 amp breaker in. So I can at least double my power. It's not the 200 amps I would like, but 100 amps is a hell of a lot better than 50. <laughs> at least then I can run the, you know, I can run the, the, the microwave, the hot water and the electric car all at the same time and not have to worry about the mini split kicking on and turning everything off. <laughs> um, but there you go. You can see everything I've laid out here. So all of this, what you see is black and all of this gray and all of this gray, all of this gray. That's all millings. It's all asphalt. So you see probably about 15% of my property is now paved and no permits are needed. Any ground stuff like concrete, asphalt, whatever, no permits. Which is really nice <laughs> um but yeah it's things are happening i mean i'm taking a risk i am taking on ten thousand dollars in debt eleven thousand dollars in debt um but i have extremely generous terms to pay it back first year no payments no interest after that it's a 30-year amortized loan at 3.75 percent Obviously, it would be insane to take 30 years to pay it off because um, that would be like 200% interest. Um, no, not that much. It's a lot, though. It's a lot of interest if you let it go that long. But um, I hope to have half of it paid off before I even start having to make payments. That's my plan. Is not, you know, I'm gonna, whatever money I have left at the end of the month, just drop it on it. But if times get tight, if times get tough, the minimum payment is only 60 bucks. I can afford that and the the convenient the creature comfort and life convenience and um whatnot that that will add to my property and our ability to live here is pretty dramatic by having all of this hell just the the reduced wear and tear on the vehicles not having to sit baking in the sun even when it's 60 degrees out it hits 120 in the car <laughs> Uh, just because the sun is so brutal. I mean, it's just, it's brutal. It's part of why I like. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I like it. You see, I got sunburned today. <laughs> a little too much time out in the sun flying the drone, and I didn't put sunblock on. Oops. <laughs> so I'm a little red from the sunburn. I can feel my skin's a little toasty. Um, not a bad sunburn, but, you know, I got to be careful. I need to, I need to go out back shirtless every now and then. Just take my shirt off and just let, you know, 20 minutes a day. Let the melanin start generating to give me some color. And um, because, yeah, I got like no color. <laughs> I'm as white as white as can be. Um, I burn so easy, it's ridiculous. But, yeah, this is going to be freaking awesome. We got this all cleaned up here. I just got a little bit more here to take care of. Which is great because I'll be able to bring this, my lab bench in. As well as the table I have over here. Set up my little L configuration, my shelves, get my studio properly set up, my lab studio set up properly. Um, the plastic shed I'm getting tomorrow, that's going to get set up right here in this space right there. So I can come out the door and go straight into the shed. I can pull the snowblower out. I can pull the lawnmower out. I got, a, oh, I got some good stuff. I got a snapper 58-volt cordless lawnmower. I brought a little corded lawnmower with me that you have to plug in the extension cord. This one doesn't need an extension cord. 
I already checked. I can get batteries for 70 bucks. I already bought an extra battery. So for what little bit of mowing I need to do, I have a cordless, nice, high quality. Damn thing's virtually brand new. I mean, the paint looks showroom brand new. Um, the snapper, so it's all red. I'll give you pictures of that later. That'll be on life of the race. And um, I also got a little telescope, 60 bucks for a little reflector telescope. I really, really want to get into hooking my camera up to a telescope. I think that'd be good for my head too. Um, the um, Also, by having this paved here, I can go out to the containers without stepping in dirt. I can also take hand cart out there, my rolling cart, my shop cart out there, and all roll smoothly because it's all paved now. That's really nice. It's a, it's a big bonus. Um, eventually, I can see um, building a small wood frame shed and using the cap for the pickup truck as a roof for the shed. This way, not only will I have another shed, because the roof is the hardest part to do, but um, I'll have a place to put the cap when I'm not using it. And you say, well, what happens if you need the cap? Well, I take the toenail cover that's on the pickup truck and I put that on the shed. So the shed will always have a roof. Uh, that's sitting here against the building. Um, I got my cabinet set up and I also got the adapter. So once I get the tiling done in the kitchen, I'll finally be able to get a stove hooked up. So I'll have an actual stove. Um, I got 200 pound propane tanks, which should be about one and a half to two years worth of gas. So I only have to get them filled up every one and a half, two years. I got a hundred pound propane tank for the back for the grilling. So I should only need to get that filled once every three or four years. Although maybe yearly, considering how much I intend to use the grilling outside. So um, that will be shortened, but this one will be lengthened. So um, I might only have to get gas every two years, which would be really nice. Um, but yeah, it's things are really starting to kick. Things are starting to, to look up. Um, I, think, I think good. I hope good. I need to get in shape. I, um, my, my ass got kicked today. I, I did a lot of traveling today, a lot of running around. I made um, $24 on field agent today, going to different places. We went to Burger King and ate for free. You know, the, the new BK Royal sandwich is freaking amazing, by the way. Excellent. It just needs a little more sauce, one more Roma tomato, and a double patty. If they did that, it'd be perfect. Um, but basically, it cost me $5.38 for the sandwich. They will reimburse me the $5.38, and they paid me $5.50. So I used that 550 to get my shower sandwich. So we went to Burger King for free thing. <laughs> um, did a couple of other field agent things. So I got you know, Swiffer things for free. Just write a review. Um, what else did I get? Oh, the Febreze again for free. And they paid me. <laughs> so I got this free stuff and I got paid, which is, that's always nice. You know, you can't, you can't argue with that. And, um, yeah, it's, it's cool. I mean, it's, I got a year and a half worth of detergent. I got four different bottles of detergent all for free. In fact, less than free. I got paid $3 for each one. Plus they paid me back for this. So I got four bottles of detergent. That's about a two year supply of detergent for us. So I won't have to buy detergent for two years. I got about a year supply of fabric softener <laughs> for free. <laughs> A couple months supply of Febreze free. <laughs> By the way, this um air heavy duty stuff, amazing. It's it literally it smells like laundry. Like when you when you sun dry fresh clean laundry. So the it's the first time I've seen crisp clean as a description and it was exactly what I would have given it as a description. I'm gonna use it in the car. I think this would smell great in the car. Just every now and then in the car, keep it smelling nice. But yeah. Very cool. I mean, things are happening. I'm sorry, no live stream today, but I can't pass up the shed. I need it. And that is a ridiculously good price. It's like a $2,000 shed. <laughs> um, hopefully all the parts are there. <laughs> you can see he had it built in the picture, so hopefully that means everything is there. But um, it's all plastic. I don't even think there's too many fasteners. It's all interlocking plastic. And it's a big one, eight by five foot. I mean, that thing's like a room. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, I'm kind of excited. You know, I, I walked over 7,000 steps today and it whooped my ass. My legs hurt so bad. <laughs> oh man, it's just, 
Oh, and I made another ten dollars at Walmart for um, baby stuff audits. Basically, one was for trainers and one was for diapers. So I just had to go to that section, do accounts, scan some UPCs, take some pictures, and I got paid five bucks each. Normally, I don't do those because I don't feel like walking through Walmart, but two of them, ten bucks. Uh, yes. <laughs> so I made twenty nine dollars today on Field Agent. Plus, I got the free Swiffer Mops and the free Febreze and the free Burger King. So. Not bad. Uh, that's it. I will see you guys later. Um, I'll make another video for this weekend, of course. I've got to get working on my analysis video for the um, the CR6 SE. I've got to work on the Sobol. I can't tell you about that. It's a prototype. It's beta. That, that won't be in the video until they say okay. They just want my feedback on it. Um, I should have the um, everyone... S. That should be coming soon. We're going to do an Ender 2 soon. Um, Creality says they're sending me a Ender 3 V2. So that's the 32-bit with the color screen. So hopefully that'll be here soon. And we'll go from there. I'll see you guys later. I'm, I'm excited. I got doors I'm going to pick up tomorrow. So I'll finally be able to replace the doors in my house. <laughs> right now we stick our fingers through the hole and pull the door open. And we can't close the doors because there's no hardware. So I've got matching hardware for the whole house coming. I've got the the 28 inch doors. I got two for 25 bucks. And I got the 24 inch doors. If the guy replies, 20 bucks a piece. So for um, 65 bucks plus the 100 bucks for the hardware. So 165 bucks I get to replace all the doors in the house to non-broken busted down doors and with nice hardware you know it's cheap hardware but it's nice um the reviews are great 4.5 out of 5 with a lot of people and they all like it so that's good but yeah very cool things are happening things are going to be fun um little by little you can see i'm starting to get this cleaned up so this is all cardboard here that's the stove um this is my little work table I have a little table outside, a little like the wooden one in here. The first one they made was the wrong size, and so we made a deal for a discounted price, and I kept them both. Uh, I like the table, so it's cool. Um, this is my little trailer with the sink in it, and this is the water softener and the propane tank and the um, water heater that I got for free so I can experiment without you know, busting up a working one, so I can experiment with... Um, making a hard water safe water heater so that's all going to go in the back of course but this is all getting cleaned up things are turning things are starting to look nice so we just gotta keep working day by day little by little it's hard being you know not physically fit as i should be and overweight as i am 460 pounds um it's hard doing all this stuff myself but that's okay one day at a time one thing at a time work the problem work the problem little by little get it done so if you want to see more of this kind of stuff check out lifeofnerese.com uh, that is my alternate channel for where i do all of my life stuff <laughs> kitten videos deliver package deliveries snowstorms weather beautiful scenery me cooking dinner, whatever, just, that's going to be everything, just, I figure, why not, <laughs> what the hell, there's going to be reviews there, so, um, I'll be, like, this here is incredible, it's a little mp3 player I got, absolutely gorgeous, the only downside is that it's a non-replaceable battery, so, you know, four or five years, it won't really be useful anymore, but, um, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's, it's one of my favorite devices, and it's powerful enough to drive my Sennheiser headphones. That's awesome. Because most little MP3 players do not have the juice to do that. That'll play FLAC, APE, all the lossless formats. It's pretty slick, and it's USB-C. It's pretty slick. But um, different things like that, you know, things I find and review, and that'll all be on that channel, not this one. But I figured to give you guys an update of what's going on at the homestead here. Um, next year we're going to have a fight with the tax people because they have declared by fiat that this house is assessed at $62,000, which I could never get $62,000 for it, <laughs> especially because there's no natural gas. 
so that would never happen so that's going to be a fight because you know well, if the assessed value is a fictional fantasy then where what's the legal basis for it because <laughs> my concern is my taxes are going up four and a half percent per year which means within 25 years my taxes will be 400 percent higher than they are now that's two thousand dollars a year that's a lot you know that's one sixth of my income so um i gotta hope i can work with that but we'll see right now it's 530 bucks i can live with that but um yeah that's it i'll see you guys later i'm just rambling at this point so you guys have a great night <laughs>